The finals just released, and if you're anything like me, then you've probably been grinding it a lot and trying to get as good as you can to climb those ranks. Although, we all know that's a lot easier said than done, and learning a brand new game can be difficult. Fortunately, I have over 300 hours in the final between the betas and now the full release. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys my best tips for each class to help you better understand your role in your team and help you rank up. There are three classes in the finals, light, medium, and heavy. All three of these classes are viable, but some might be a little easier to use than others. The light character has a very high skill ceiling, allowing good players to completely dominate the lobby, but the skill floor is also a lot lower compared to other classes. There's various playstyles that you can use with each of these classes, which is one of my favorite things about the finals. With that being said, however, there will always be weapons and utility that shine just a little brighter than the others. For the light class, you have access to a grappling hook, which will allow you to quickly traverse the map. This can be very useful for quickly grabbing a vault and going towards a cash out, or even just scouting ahead of your teammates, giving you an easy and fast way of getting out of harm's way. You'll also be able to use the cloaking ability, which paired with the vanishing bomb will allow you to stay cloaked for a long time. With this ability, you'll lose a lot of your mobility, but your combat abilities up close will be greatly improved. Assuming, of course, you can consistently and correctly use the cloak. Finally is the dash ability. This gives you some of your mobility back that you lost by getting rid of the grapple hook, while also giving you some up close advantages and fights. The dash works in whichever direction you're facing, meaning you can use this to play vertically as well, giving you a lot of options. As for the weapons, your best bets are definitely between the XP-54, the V95, or the LH-1. The light's other weapons aren't bad, but if we're talking about high level ranked, in my opinion, these three weapons offer the most versatility. Personally, my favorite is the XP-54 for its fast fire rate, good damage, and low recoil. Overall, it's a very consistent gun that will suit you for most situations. The light also has some of the best gadgets in the game that can easily make or break a team fight. Starting first of course with the stun gun. The stun gun will essentially completely immobilize your target. Sneak up on someone and hit them with the stun gun to stop them from aiming down sights, using their utility, and even sprinting. It can also be used to instantly stop someone from stealing your cash out, making the stun gun a must pick for all light players. The second most important piece of utility for the light is their glitch grenades. These will disable all powered objects in the affected area, meaning the heavy class's shields, the medium's heals, and more will all be instantly disabled if hit by a glitch grenade. These grenades can easily be the difference between losing or winning a game, and with how powerful both the heals on the medium and the shields on the heavy are, as we'll see soon, the glitch grenades are a must pick for the light class. This piece of utility can actually be a few different things depending on what your main specialization is. If you have the cloaking device, I would recommend trying the vanishing bomb. This will cloak not only yourself, but also your teammates. Not to mention, if you use your main cloak, then hit yourself with a vanishing bomb, it'll actually stop your cloak timer. This will give you a few extra seconds to make plays and can be very helpful with keeping you as an invisible assassin. You could also run either grapple or dash and keep the vanishing bomb to allow yourself to make both cloak plays as well as retain the movement the other two abilities give you. With all the boring setup for the class out of the way, let's move on to some actual in-game tips to help you take your light gameplay to the next rank. When you're playing the light class, you have to remember that at all times, you are very squishy. You cannot take fair one-on-one -on -one fights as the light class. Ideally, you find a way to flank the team you're trying to fight while they're distracted with your other two teammates. In ranked, it's very common to see one or more of both a heavy and a medium on a single team, and these two classes are exactly who you should be targeting. If you as the light can get behind the team you're fighting and stun the heavy, shielding against your teammates' attacks, or stun the healer, keeping them alive, you can essentially single-handedly win your team that fight. It's also really important that you try to start each fight with glitch grenades, as this will completely disable the other team's utility and make them sitting ducks for your other two teammates while you look for an opening on the flank. Outside of team fights, however, you should be using the light class as sort of a scout, going a bit ahead of your teammates and letting them know what you're running into before you do so. This can also be very useful while defending a cash out, as you can have your light give you an early warning as to when the next team will attack, giving you crucial time to prepare. Playing near your team, but still a bit away scouting, also will give you a greater chance at flanking the team trying to steal your cash out. Bring all of these things together, and you'll be one of the most annoying players in the lobby every single game. Moving on to the medium class, who I mained in the closed beta. 
The medium is so important for keeping your team alive, but sadly I see so many medium players playing him completely wrong. Now I should say before we get into this, that there are two ways you can play the medium. You could try to go for combat score and be a damage dealer, or you could be the healer. A lot of people are trying to do both, which just never ends up working. While yes, you can do damage and heal, I'm seeing most medium players never healing or reviving unless someone calls for it. And in my opinion, the medium is strongest as a medic, where your primary job is to keep your teammates alive, more specifically, your heavy player. Currently, I'm seeing most teams run either double medium, one heavy, or double heavy, one medium, with a few exceptions to the occasional light player, of course. If you're playing double medium, one of your medium players can actually focus more for DPS while the other fills the medic role. But if you're the sole medium on your team, however, both of your teammates will surely be looking to you for heals. And because of that, if you're an actual good healer, you'll quickly find out that you're getting almost 10 times more support score than you are combat score each game. But that's not a bad thing, as if you're playing with a good team, your teammates should be able to output even more damage than normal since you're essentially giving them infinite health. But let's not get off track too much. Clearly, you guys can see that I'm biased towards the healing beam over the turret or recon senses, but that doesn't mean that they can't be useful. I just think that for most situations, the healing beam will be a better pick. With that being said, let's go over the medium's utility. Your first gadget should always be the defibrillator, regardless if you're running the healing beam or not. This will allow you to instantly revive your teammates mid-fight and has turned the tide of so many teamfights for me and my friends. A lot of people when their teammate dies will stop healing and start shooting, but sometimes it's best to go straight for the revive, especially if it's a heavy player as they're going to start off with the most HP after being revived. If you can get the revive off and instantly hit them with the heals, your opponent is going to be in rough shape as at some point they're going to run out of utility and ammo, being forced to either die or fall back. Next. You need to bring some sort of mobility for you and your team. This is very important as some of the cash outs will be on roofs or floating platforms and your only way of getting up there could be this gadget. It's really up to you which you prefer more over the jump pad or the zip line, but personally I've had more fun with the jump pad. For your last gadget, you can really pick between a few options and it depends on what fits you and your team's playstyle the most. But here are a few of my favorites that you should consider trying. Starting with the APS turret, which destroys enemy projectiles. But what most of you probably didn't know is that landmines, C4, and some other placeable gadgets are actually counted as projectiles as well. A common strategy from teams is to surround the cash out with mines and C4, which stops anyone from getting close to it without first dealing with the utility. But did you know that you can actually place the APS on an interactable item and throw it at the cash out to completely destroy all the utility on it? including mines and C4. Well, I didn't until the other day either, but this alone has made the APS turret one of my favorite third gadgets to run. Another good option would be the sonar grenade to help scan your surroundings or the mines, which can be very useful for, again, defending the cash out. Or if you're ever being chased, you could throw a mine at your feet as you're running away in a building to bait an unsuspecting victim into a free kill. As for the medium's weapons, the default AKM is by far going to be your most consistent gun, and because of this, it's the gun that I use most of the time. However, the F car can be a lot of fun and packs a punch, having 16 bullets less than the AKM is really tough. The revolver has the best damage output potential, although you need to hit headshots with it, and because of its slow fire rate and reload, paired with a very low ammo count, if you miss some shots, you'll likely pay the price. In my opinion, while the other guns may be fun here and there, I don't believe they're super competitive for high level ranked outside of some niche scenarios. We already discussed the medium's primary role in the team, but we'll go a little bit more in depth now. As a medium, you're going to be the main person getting your team from point A to point B using your mobility gadget, whether that's the zip line or the jump pad. You've got a fair amount of HP to tank some damage, but you should always try to hide behind your heavy player or just out of line of sight of the enemies where you can still heal your teammates. As the medic, you're going to be targeted by the other team, so don't be surprised if a cloaked light comes up behind you with a stun gun. So always make sure you're in a good spot, preferably without multiple different flank points for you to die to. Your goal in these fights isn't to do damage, but to stay alive and heal your teammates. Your heavy player will almost always be your main target for heals, as he's basically your personal bodyguard. If anyone pushes you, it's mostly up to your heavy to quickly dish out the damage to finish them off. It's very difficult to tell you exactly when you should and should not be healing, and every engagement is different. 
So this is something that you're just going to have to learn over trial and error. But remember that if your heavy is taking damage, keep him alive at all costs. He can easily do enough damage to deal with the threats given he has the HP to do it. If anyone goes down in the fight, your first thought should be about how you can revive them. If they're in a spot where it's certain death for both you and your teammate if you revive them, then simply wait it out. Because normally people don't sit on the statues for too long, allowing you to just run and hide for a few seconds before getting the revive off. Last, but certainly not least, is the Heavy class, who I've been maining since the full release of the finals. The Heavy is by far my favorite class right now, and that's totally not because he's completely overpowered with the most HP of any class, paired with multiple shields that can essentially extend his HP even further with the highest DPS output potential of any class. The Heavy can be played in so many different ways by either grabbing a sledgehammer and the charge ability and rushing towards people, or just bringing the goo gun and barricading yourself in a room to help defend the cash out. Either way, the Heavy is a great class, but does take some key things to really utilize his full potential. Personally, I like to run the Mesh Shield ability as it gives me and my team the most survivability potential and fits our playstyle well. This shield basically works the same as Reinhardt from Overwatch, but you're able to jump around, all, and even take zip lines and jump pads all while holding the shield out. So this can be very useful in most situations. As for your weapon, in my opinion, for serious high level ranked, you only have two options. Either the Lewis gun, which is an all around good LMG, or the SA-1216, which if you haven't realized yet, is completely busted. Most team fights are going to be up close anyways, so as long as you're actually playing the objective, this just means you're going to be playing into the shotgun strengths, and never once have I been running the heavy with the shoddy and wished that I had an LMG instead. So in my opinion, the best weapon that you can choose for the heavy right now has got to be the shotgun. It'll take a game or two for you to get used to, but trust me, after that, you're going to love it. Pair the shotgun with the heavy's first piece of utility, the dome shield, and you'll take it to a whole other level. The dome shield doesn't have nearly as much HP as your mesh shield, but it can be a fantastic tool for easily killing entire teams, even by yourself. See, the dome shield allows you to play inside of it while shooting out. The enemies, of course, can't shoot through it whatsoever. This gives you a lot of options with the dome shield. Firstly, with the shotgun, you can throw it at your feet and walk in and out of it, basically giving yourself a wall that you can walk through and shoot through, but that your enemy cannot. If you've ever played a lot of Apex Legends, then you're probably pretty familiar with these sort of shotgun dome fights. And if that's the case, then you'll find just how easy it is to destroy entire teams with this one gadget and the shotgun. Your second gadget should 100% be the RPG, as this gives you massive damage output while also allowing you to quickly take down structures or make new entrances or exits to a building on the fly. This one is really a no-brainer, and I really don't think I have to convince you guys of how good an RPG is. The C4, however, some of you guys may not respect as much as you should. The rest of the gadgets the Heavy can pick, aside from the Barricade, are all things that the other classes can bring themselves, meaning it's kind of a waste for you to bring them yourself when you have access to some of the other best gadgets in the game. The Barricade is good, however if you're running the Dome and Mesh Shield, it's a bit redundant and will overall significantly reduce your damage output potential. The only downside to the C4 is its initial delayed detonation after throwing it, as well as its short range. You can't throw the C4 very far, and if you're close enough to throw it at a team, oftentimes you're better off just pulling out your shotgun. Instead, use the C4 and throw it onto any item that you can pick up in the game. This could be anything from one of the various explosive barrels to plants, trash cans, and even chairs. If you can pick it up and throw it at them, then this will work. The red barrel will offer the furthest and fastest projectile, but will be a little tricky to time. The green barrels will explode with a poison cloud, finishing off any opponents you didn't quite get with the C4. The yellow barrels will explode into fire, which can also do the trick. But possibly the best use for the C4 is in a defensive manner. After you have the cash out, place both of your C4 on the cash out itself, and now simply wait for the team to start stealing the cash out and blow it. It'll be the easiest kill you've ever gotten. If you want to go a step further with this though, you and your team can set up a similar trap, but instead of placing the C4 directly on the cash out, which is a little bit obvious to good players, instead place one C4 on the roof of the floor below the cash out. Do this for the floor below that as well, and now you and your team play on the bottom floor and wait for them to steal it again. This time, instead of instantly killing whoever is stealing, you'll drop them, the cash out, and possibly the rest of their team straight into you and your entire team on the bottom floor. Right after you blow the C4, 
throw your dome shield down and pull out your RPG for the easiest team wipe you've ever had. This is so disorienting for the other team as one second they're on the top floor stealing a cash out and the next they're on the bottom floor inside of your dome that they can't shoot through with your whole team shooting them down. These little things with the heavy is exactly why I've been maining him since release and I highly recommend you try out these strats. So to quickly summarize, your goal is the heavy player. You are your team's tank and you should be trying to soak up as much damage as you can. Use your mesh shield to get close to the enemies, then deploy your dome shield to maximize your shotgun's potential. Be sure you're fighting with your teammates and try to defend them. Oftentimes, the other team will target your healer instead of you, so it's important to keep them alive. Try to fight inside of buildings or in close quarters where your shotgun will offer the most damage. Your RPG is also more effective up close as it's easier to get a direct hit and insta-kill someone. Just be careful not to blow up yourself in the process. But that will conclude my guide for each class in the finals. I hope that you all learned something and if you did, consider liking the video and sharing it with your friends so that you guys are all on the same page and have the best chances of ranking up. Don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications on so that you guys do not miss my future videos and thank you so much for watching.